So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this driveway. I'm going to show you how to create the grass crease. I'm going to get the planting here, set up the tiling, but the most focus is just to create this in a simplistic way. So let's jump straight into it. So in our scene, I have a few splines set up. So I have one for the driveway. I have one separating the planter from the driveway. It's just a bit of concrete. We isolate that there. I have where the planter box go in. I have the, the pathway. I have the grass. I have the path. And then finally, I have the road. So let's quickly put that all together. So in here, I'm just going to add in an edit poly. So hit F3 to see it. And there we go. And then I'm going to quickly go here. I'm going to add in a tarmac. And there's asphalt. We're just going to drag in any of these. Let's go for this one and drag it on. Then what I want to do is I want to go to our path here and I want to do the same thing. Add an edit poly. And we also want to do the same. So I can copy this, go to here and go to paste. So then we have two objects here. Now I want to create my own material. I use this, which is material texture loader. and I'm going to hit load textures. Pavement right here, click all these and click open. And then it's going to load them all in based on its name. I'm going to change this to real world and I'm going to change this to four meters. I'm going to create my material and I'm going to call this M underscore pavement. I'm going to click OK. Then with both of these selected, I can then go displace checked and UV map. I don't want it 20 centimeters. I want it 0 0.03 or 2 should be fine. And then I'm going to hit apply to selection. And there you go. We have our texture. Now, when you're using a driveway or a path, you want the texture to go perpendicular to this line here. You don't want it parallel. And what do I mean by that? So if I was to go to my materials, so if I was to load this material in and I go into my texture, go down here and let's say I rotate this 90. So you can see the textures running along this way, but that's not how they'll put the pavement in. They'll always have it the other way like this. Just in case you're wondering, you never want to see pavement going up and down that way. you will be always perpendicular. This one, again, it could also be perpendicular. It's up to you. But since you won't really see it in shot, I'm not too worried about how this is done. But again, that would probably be up and down this way, not the current way it is. So if you want to change that, there's a few ways you can do it. You can go in here, go to this UV map, select the gizmo, and you can just rotate it until it's 90 degrees. Now I'm going to hit A so it snaps 90, rotate it, and there you go. So you would have something probably dividing this, or you just have it split like that, and you would have your texture going this way and then this way. So the next one here is this concrete. So again, we're going to add on an edit poly. Again, go here. I have my concrete I want to use. Hit load textures. I have my concrete here. Click open. Go to real world. It's four meters again. Go to create material um, underscore concrete. Click OK. And then I'm going to apply a displacement as well and UV map. I definitely want this low. Something like 0 0.02 will be fine. And click apply to selection. And we're happy out. So again, I want to select this. And then I'm going to, for this one, I'm going to add in a shell modifier. So it's going to add a bit of thickness. I don't want it that way. So I'm putting zero here. And I'm going to put negative 0.4. Oh, sorry, just point 0.4 because it's pushing the other way. And there we go. Then I'm going to add on top an edit poly. I'm going to click F4. We can isolate this if we want by hitting Alt Q. Then I'm going to go into poly mode, hitting four, select. And we're going to go into our inset over here. And I'm going to do something quite small, something along that range, 0 0.05 would be fine. Then I'm going to hold down shift and push this down. And then we have our planter box, just like that. Now I'm going to go into my materials. I'm going to select the concrete I have here and I'm going to apply it to this now. Now, one thing we need to do is we need to add in a UVW map. Make sure it's box and make sure it's real world. And also we need to copy this displacement mod here. Hit copy, select here and go paste instance because we want it to copy what we change here with the, any other material that has that concrete. So we're almost done. The last things we need to do is we have to create the soil here. So this one, I'm going to go to edit poly and I'm going to go into my materials and I'm going to add in this grass material, pop it on and the same with this material. Edit poly and click and drag this on and make sure we have a UVW map on top. Then we can click and drag this on and make sure that material is applied 
And now if I go to standard materials, shading materials with maps, we should be able to see everything. And there we go. So let's check this because I obviously didn't add in a UVW map. And boxer planer is fine. And just like that, we have pretty much our scene set up ready to go. One last thing is it looks like this needs a UVW map as well. Uh, make sure it's on planer or box, whichever one works for you. Now that we have that done, I'm going to set up the camera and the lighting. So let's create the camera first of all. So go to create, go to cameras, go down to V-Ray and click our physical camera. I'm going to it around here. So I'm going to click and drag and point it over general direction. We can always change it later. Then a few default settings I like to change are, well, it's after remembering my previous settings. So I'm going to keep this around 20, 22 and 100. Uh, we might check depth of field at the end, but that's not too important at the moment. The next thing we need to do now is we need to go to create, go to our lighting again, go to V-Ray and we're going to click our V-Ray sun. Now I want the shadows to be going pretty much a 45 degree angle away from our camera, not straight at our camera. So we're going to go the sun position over here and we're going to drag the light in this direction. Click the yes to this and then we're going to go into our front view and lift this up. Not too much, something like here. I don't want it too bright all the way up this end, so around this point. And then in this view, we're gonna make sure we have C for camera, and we're gonna start moving this camera slightly up. And looking at that, the one setting you wanna make sure you have for your camera, if I select the camera here, is the focal length. And I'm happy with 50 because I wanna be nice and close in on the detail. So what we're gonna do is go on top view, select our target, and we're gonna start moving this somewhere where we want it, so like that. Then we're going to push this down and something like that, something like that. And then with the camera, I think I'm going to move that down slightly like so. And then also back. Okay. Grab the target because I don't want to see empty space here. Hit F3, grab the target there. And we're going to maybe move this closer. And I think that will work. The lay last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move the camera in a bit more. There's something like that. So we're going to see a bit of everything in this shot, but we don't have any empty space as well. So let's go into a render and see what we have at the moment. Okay, so that looks pretty well lit. You can see the displacement is working here. There's a bit of an issue where the displacement is causing a bit of a difference in these two, but I kind of like it because it creates a bit of a divide between the planter box and this concrete, so I'm going to leave it. So we have a nice displacement going on here. The sun's hitting it nicely, and we get some good detail. So now the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add planting in this section here uh, and by just doing grass. So let's go in here, create our first forest per object. I'm going to open up my layers. I'm going to make sure that I have my I2 layers active, my forest pro object here, and I'm gonna click and drag onto the screen, go into my library, and I'm gonna add a preset. I'm gonna go into my lawns, and then I'm gonna pick something, since this is a small detail, I don't mind using one of the detailed ones now, so I'm gonna use this daisy detail here. I'm gonna click load, select it, and click OK to all the messages. Now we need to pick our surface. So I'm going to go to surfaces, click the plus button and click here. Then I'm going to click auto, make sure that's on, go into my areas and I'm going to make sure surfaces is on. And just like that, we have our grass. Now I need to name this. So let's go F underscore garden. Actually, we'll say grass first, underscore garden. And that's as simple as that. Now we just want to do the planting in the planter box. Now I've already created a spline here to create that area, but for you, you might want to select the out border and then create the spline that way. So I'm going to go to Forest Pro, just like I did, click and drag it on. We'll name it straight away. Go F underscore planter. Then what we want to do is we want to go into our surfaces. Now, then we want to go into our areas, click plus, and we're going to add in that spline. And now we're going to pick some planting that suits it. So I'll be back just to pick those plantings. So I've picked my planting. I just need to make sure that I have my area switched on, which is this. 
And let's change this to edge mode. I want to go to distribution because there's just such a small gap. The distribution will be set to dense. I want to switch this to full. And then I also want to lower this down to quite a low amount. I'm going to try something around 32. And then I'm going to go to display and change this to point cloud and use color ID so we can identify this once. And I'm pretty happy with that. Um, first thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit render and see what this looks like. So as you can see, we have nice grass going on here. This again, doesn't have any transforms, but we're getting some planting. There's a bit of a gap here. So we're going to use this grass to also fill in here. So first things first, I want to go to my transforms. I'm going to switch on rotation. I'm going to switch on scale. So then that will change that way. And then I'm going to go to distribution and increase this a small bit. Let's go half this. Let's go 16. And then we get something a bit more dense. Okay, so in order to add in grass here, I've converted the spline to a surface. I made a copy of it. So I'm in the grass area. I'm going to click plus on the surfaces. I'm going to add this in. And now we have our grass. So now if I bring back the planter, we have the planting on top of the grass and that should be everything we need in terms of our planting. So let's render that and see what it looks like. And as you can see, we have our planting in the garden, we have our planting here, we have our displacement working. The very last thing now we're gonna do is I'm gonna teach you how to create the grass crete. So the grass crete um, planting and object is actually coming from i2 software themselves. They have a tutorial, which I go here. You can watch it here and get more in depth, but ba this is what I'm basing it off. So if you want to follow that, you absolutely can. I'm going to do a quite quicker version of it. And yeah, let's jump straight into it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click my rail cone object, click and drag it on, right click and go into modify. We're going to name this or underscore grass create and click enter. Then we're going to go into our style editor here and we're going to start. This is where the magic happens pretty much. So we have our segment here. So let's first of all, drag that on. So we know this is going to be a segment and click that. And then we're going to click our array 2s and drag that on. The next thing we're going to do is we need a spline. And I usually put this on top here. And I'm going to click here and we're going to click this spline here. And then we're going to plug this straight into our clipping area. Now, this is relatively easy for what you need to do. It's not as complicated as you think. So we only have one of these. So the first thing we want to do is you want to mirror this. So go back to our real current object. In our style editor, we want to grab a mirror. So we grab this, put this in here, and in the mirror, we want to put it on Y. Okay, so you want to put it on Y going that way. And then we also want to do a sequence. And we want this on Y as well. We're going to plug this one into here. It's going to open up another one, so we can plug this one into here. We're then going to tell this, go into default, at the moment, nothing will happen. You can even have a thing. There's no size or X or spline on X, Y. So let's go here and go extend X, Y. And just like that, we have our topology. Now it's only showing it like this at the moment because it was, it's saving our viewport. So if we go down here, I'm going to click mesh for now so we can see it. And just like that, we have our design. Now these grass creeds will have a gap. So you need to put a gap in. So we're going to add in some padding. And this is going to be 0 0.003, so only three centimeters, 0 0.003, 0 0.003, and 0 0.003. And then we have the padding inside. And it needs this padding because the grass needs to grow in between here. And the point of grass crete, if you don't know what it is, grass crete is so cars can drive on it, but it also gives you kind of that soft scape feel of planting. So the next thing we need to do is, as you look here, you see we want this flush. And you notice my spline is slightly below and that's 0.2 down. So if we need to bring that down, what we need to do is we can go in here. We can go to our Z offset and I think it's 0 0.008, sorry, minus 0 0.08. And that will make sure it's flush with here. So now that we have that, we need to add in a material that's grand. What we need to do is we can go in here and grab the materials that's off this. Go to M, grab the material here. Grab this, click a rail cone object, and get rid of this now, and apply it. And we have our material. Now, this segment we can hide, and now we have the planting to add. But first of all, let's hit render and see if that's actually looking correct. And there you go. So now we have our pavement. Again, there's supposed to be gaps in here so it can grow. I deliberately hit the planting, but that's something we're going to add in right now. So let's jump into that. So now let's add the, the planting to this grass crate. So again, go to Forest Pro. Click and drag this out, and we're going to name this 
f underscore grass crete. We're then going to drag this into the proper layer, which is our objects here. Switch it back on. And then I'm going to isolate this. So these are the plantings we're going to use. This again is supplied by i2. You can get it off their website. So click and drag all these. We're going to go back to our forest project here. We're going to add in those plantings. So go to geometry and we're going to click. Actually, if I hide everything, first of all, I'll make it a bit easier so you can see it. And again, we can hide there. So yeah, there we have it. So then we can click this little button to add in a bunch at once. Grab our clover, daisy, all the dead grass, go down here. And we have all our planting and click add. Click yes. And now we have all our planting. Now, one thing they do in I2 as well is you need, what's good to do is with the wild grass, we'll give this one color. We're going to do the same with the grass filler. Okay. And then the grass and clover are fine. You can probably put the clover in with the wild grass, but for the moment, I'll just leave it like that. So the first thing we want to do with the forest pro object is we want to add in a surface. So click plus and add this surface in. Make sure it's on auto and then we're going to go to areas. In areas, we want to delete whatever this is and add in our own one. Again, this spline and then we'll have our objects in. Now the distribution is off. So what I'm going to do first of all is go distribution, change this to full. Then we have like that. But then we need to change this a lot. So before I change this, I want to go to now in areas, we're going to go to select models here and I'm going to pick the ones I want. So the ones I want to start off are just the grass filler. Okay. And then we'll click. Okay. So with this, we can then decide this distribution. So let's go to distribution and we're going to change this to something like very low, something like five, because we want it packed in here. And it might even be lower than that. I think in the end, we're going to have to go something like two and it's going to be quite dense, but at the moment we'll exclude it. So we have our grass and the thing about this grass is it won't penetrate to, sorry, it won't penetrate through the object. So let's hit render and see what that looks like. So you can see we have the grass inside now, but it's not tall enough to go through. So we need to add more planting to go in between these cracks and go sporadically around here. So we're happy enough with that. The one thing we need to change probably is the transform. So hit stop, go back to our forest project and we want to go into the transforms. We don't want to do translation. We only want to use rotation and scale just to give that variation in. Now we need to go back to our areas and we need to add in the exact same spline, which you can do with forest pro. You can use the same spline over and over, click that and you see the other plants have now been added in. So again, we want to go select models, pick, and we want everything else except the grass filler and click OK. So now we have all that. Now the issue with the grass filler is it's now penetrating through the surface. So we need to add in our rail clone object and that will be an exclude. Now if I hit render now, you'll see we now have more wild grass and we have grass actually going through these gaps. Now we don't have too many going through these gaps. You can see one here. But the reason for that is the quality of the mask. So when you add an object like this, a, a piece of geometry, a rail clone, it creates a black and white mask and that resolution is determined here. So we're going to crank this up to something like 4096. And then if we hit render again, you're going to see more grass objects going through this gap now. Now this is a bit too wild. If I look down here, you see it's very wild. So we need to change the probability of some of these objects. So we're going to hit stop and this is going to be personal preference. So what we need to do is go into geometry and say the wild grass or the dead grass, say we wanted to decrease this and you go down to probability and you go, I actually only want this about 80%. Then the daisies themselves, I want to change that to something like 40% clover. I definitely don't want them too often. We'll go 50. And then the wild grass itself also, let's bring that down to something like 60. So with that, then if we hit render, you can see we varied up what's being shown. We're seeing a bit more daisies and the long grass isn't as much. Again, it might be a bit too wild for your liking. There's other ways you can change this. If you want, you can add in say a few objects here. And in here, I'm going to say disabled disabled and disabled. And that will basically make it so 
it will add in empty spots where you just don't want anything. So if I hit render again, you can see it's a bit less dense. A bit hard to see from here, but overall I'm happy with that. And with that, we're pretty much done. Uh, if you want, you can go in here and you could say add in a white balance, add in exposure. And if you want, add in a curse as well. And if we go into white balance, we can bring this up, make it a bit warmer, or you want to make it a bit cooler. Usually you go a bit warmer. It really depends on what shot you're looking for. This one, the concrete look, maybe cool looks good. Go to exposure. We find, oh, we need to increase that a bit. If you want to blow it out a bit, bring down the highlight burn a tiny bit. Go to curves. We can take a few small edits, maybe bring up that contrast, but then also bring in those lights a bit more. And you get something like that. That's obviously way too much, but luckily you can go in here and you can change this to like 0.5 and that way it's not as strong. And yeah, just like that, you have this brilliant view set up and ready to go. And you can also use this grass crude over and over. It can save it as a preset. I hope this video has been good and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.